Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Wa sallam Amma ba'd Ayyuh al-Habbath billah Alhamdulillah we've reached Lake Olali, which is frozen over, min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I wanted to remind myself and my brothers and sisters about the importance of taking care of the heart by dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran. The Quran is the best dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And The heart, Ahabatifillah, in Arabic, one of the names for the heart is the Qalb. And the Qalb, it's called Al Qalb, the verb, Qalaba, Yan Qalibu, it means to, to be changing, you know, to, to change or uh, basically to change, you could say turn over. And the reason they call that the qalb in Arabic for the heart is because the heart is always changing sometimes you're in strong iman sometimes you feel a certain way and you're ready your ibad is good bi'idnillah and other times you're weak and you fall into sin and the qalb is the most important thing that Allah is going to look at your heart, your qalb, and your deeds. Did you have good deeds? Did you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity? And how you died, how are you going to meet your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In the Allah La yandru ila adsadikum wala ila surikum walakin yandru ila al qulubukum wa amalakum. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Verily Allah does not look to your your shape and your, your, your appearance but he looks at your deeds and your heart to see if you had ikhlas lillah you were sincere and were you following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your deeds and look at that in looking at this hadith it affirms for us even more so the importance of those two conditions to have our deeds accepted. First and foremost being what? Ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِّرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ And they were not commanded except to worship Allah with sincerity. Pure worship. Not sharing that worship with anyone or anything else. And that's the purpose of the all the prophets and messengers, what they were sent with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ta'gut. We have sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid a tagut, you know, to stay away from those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those things that call to the worship of them, themselves. That's the divine purpose. I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping. So that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the uh, conditions for our deeds to be accepted. And the second one is that we have mutaba, 
that we follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we pray, when we fast, when we make hajj, it is in accordance with how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it. And that we avoid innovation, we avoid innovating in the religion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fuhu rad whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected wa fi riwayatin li muslim man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fuhu rad and in the narration in Sahih Muslim the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected letting us know <coughs> that if we don't follow the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and we deviate from it in our deeds, in our ibadah, in our worship then it will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that action in which we perform that bid'ah, that newly invented type of worship will be rejected, it won't be accepted by your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of us we pray to have it accepted by Allah, no one uh, prays I think for exercise and for yoga and no one prays for stretching and things like this but rather we we seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the hadith that we mentioned that Allah looks at our hearts and our deeds lets us know it's not important our shortcomings in appearance some of us are more handsome than others. Some of us are more beautiful than others. Some people are tested with various sicknesses and ailments and what have you. But Allah doesn't care about any of that, except that you're patient. If you're patient with that, with the test, patience with the beauty, patience with the lack of beauty, patience with the sickness, patience with the lack of sickness. How do we be patient when we are blessed with something? By not being arrogant. And not using the ni'mah for disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are things that we have to reflect on. Ahabati fillah. And I wanted to remind myself first and foremost and my brothers and sisters. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.